Доброго вечора, ми з України. Hello, comrades. Welcome back to Ushanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. В эфире программа Ушанка Show. In today's video, we're going to talk about joys of owning a Soviet passport. And I'm planning to make a separate video by my own experience having a Soviet passport. I got it when I was 16 years old. So that was 1987. But right now, let's learn about experience of Robert Robinson, black engineer from United States, who spent 44 years in the Soviet Union and who wrote the book Black on Red, my 44 years inside the USSR. I think Comrade Robertson's experience with the Soviet passport is extremely interesting and valuable because he came to the Soviet Union as an American citizen and then he gave up his citizenship and he accepted Soviet citizenship. So he had experience living in the USSR as an American and now he lives as a Soviet. If you follow my coverage of his book Black and Red, we stopped at the part when he went to the Odessa to be filmed in the movie Miklucha Maklai. And actually this movie is available on YouTube, which is quite amazing. And you could see Robert Robertson playing a native from Papua New Guinea. So while filming that movie, he had his watch stolen. So let's see what he says. The local police soon got to know me also. My encounter with Odessa police began when I reported that my watch was stolen from the locker I was using in a room next to the studio. It was a precious possession because my brother had given it to me as a gift in 1926 and it was the most reliable watch I had ever owned. The film director wasted no time in calling the police. In a matter of minutes, three officers arrived. They questioned everyone. So here's pretty much goes description how they went through really quick, it was fast reaction. So very impressive work for the Soviet police. About 30 minutes after the first policeman arrived, another officer appeared with the large dog, which sniffed every inch of the locker room floor. When the dog arrived, everyone knew the situation was potentially dangerous. For such theft, a person could end up with three years imprisonment at hard labor. Every member of the production crew was interrogated a second time. We were kept four hours after our normal quitting time, but not a clue was discovered. So for three days, police was searching, and three days later, Robertson received a phone call from the central police headquarters asking him to come down there and bring my passport along. I showed up at the requested, as requested on the following day. When I mentioned who I was, the officer on duty greeted me warmly and escorted me to the assistant chief of police, who also seemed very gracious. He asked me to have a seat and said, I am sorry that we haven't been able to find your watch, which I understand you value very much. Be assured that we will continue our investigation. We'll find the culprit and you will get your watch back. I thank him for his concern and all the while wondering why I was being treated with such care. <laughs> That's a good part of coming up. Soon I found out. Please, said assistant police chief, may I have your passport? I need the number on it, so I should so should my men find your watch after you leave Odessa, they will have a means of contacting you. I handed it to him. Yet when he noticed that it was a Soviet passport, his entire demeanor immediately changed. One moment he was cordial, the next moment he was indifferent. Oh, I see you have a Soviet passport, he said, unable to conceal his surprise. He handed back to me and did not even bother to write the number on the official form but merely scribble it on a piece of scrap paper which was obviously destined for the trash can as soon as I left. Now that he knew I was a Soviet citizen, my stolen watch no longer mattered. They had all assumed that I was a foreign actor. Once again, reminder, Robert Robertson was African-American. But now, since they knew I would not be going to a foreign country where I could criticize the Soviet Union and its police force, I no longer mattered. I was certain that he would call off the investigation and I would never see my watch again. 
my hunch turn out to be correct. So I found this part of the Robert Robertson book extremely interesting and somewhat funny because there's the guy who, I mean, he spent a lot of years already in the Soviet Union, pretty much more than 10 years, and he figured out that there's a double standard going on for the Soviet citizens versus foreign citizens. So while they were thinking that he was a foreigner, he had a top service from the police, and they were searching extremely hard looking for his watch. As long as they discovered he's a Soviet citizen, he completely lost any interest. I had a kind of similar experience, but from a different perspective. You know, I was a citizen of the Soviet Union, and I had a Soviet passport for traveling abroad. And I used it even after 1991, after Soviet Union collapsed. They didn't have a new uh, passports for Ukraine, so they let people use their old Soviet passports. And I traveled to America three times with my Soviet passport. And every time on every border, I always had trouble crossing the border because my passport was like a red flag. They were questioning me at one time, even having a green card. Well, that time I already had a Ukrainian passport. But still, they made me uh, sit in the airport in Amsterdam, then little many out. And then when I got American passport, I noticed what a huge difference was traveling with the United States passport. It's pretty much all the doors wide open. No one cared about visas or what the reason you want to go out out of the airport or do you have any uh, reasons to stay there legally. No one asked any questions if you're an American citizen, you have American passport. Traveling with Soviet passport and later with Ukrainian passport was a real nightmare. And it was literally up to the border officer because one time I already had a green card, as I mentioned, and I had Ukrainian passport. They let me out and I spent a night in Amsterdam, flying from Kyiv back to Chicago. Next time, the different guy said, no, you can't leave, you have to sit in the airport. And I was extremely upset because I was planning to have, you know, visit uh, Amsterdam. I found it as a beautiful city. Then when I had American passport, I went again and the question was, what your, you know, what the reason of visiting Amsterdam? And I just said, I'm, I want to hang out. And he just smiled and I said, welcome to Amsterdam. Just put the stamp in my American passport and here we go. So as a Ukrainian citizen, I had to explain for five minutes that uh, tomorrow I'm flying to Chicago. There's my visa. There's my green card. There's my plane ticket. As an American citizen, I just said that I'm planning to hang out in Amsterdam. And it was enough. Just you're welcome and you go. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that Robert Robertson made. I mean, it made his life way more interesting and challenging. But because he refused to return to the United States when American government requested him to, and he lost his citizenship, they ended up being stuck in the Soviet Union for 44 years and barely could escape the Soviet Union through Africa in the 70s just because he got Soviet passport and that was now up to Soviet government if he could travel anywhere. Okay, this video is a little bit short, but I hope you still enjoy it. As always, please don't forget to like it and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.
Sergey uh, wrote a book based on diaries he made when he was first in the United States. And I, as I understand, this is just volume one, right? That's correct. He's going to have more, multiple volumes coming out. Well, I said, well, since uh, Sergey is kind enough to come up and speak with us, I bought the book. I said, I might as well read this. I read this in one sitting, two hours, two and a half hours. I just couldn't put it down. It was so fascinating because uh, your writing is very compelling for one. And his story is very interesting for two. It's really interesting. You know, we've lived here our whole lives. We don't have that perspective. It's just so interesting to hear someone else's perspective about what we take for granted. So I hope you really tune in and, and listen to what he has to say. It's a very interesting, very informed perspective. Sergey is not a historian. He's an electrical engineer by trade, but I find that he has a depth of understanding on history, economics, culture. So just a, just a very observant fellow and a, a great storyteller. So. Uh, let's